Welcome back to the show, everybody. My name is Matt. You're on Beyond Recovery, and you may also be listening to this on Matt Gardner Live. My guest today is Daniel, and he is coming in from Nature's Warehouse. We're going to be talking about all things food, nutrition, what you're putting in your body, what you maybe aren't aware of what you're putting in your body. Going to go a lot of different routes on this interview. Perfect time to do it right here at the beginning of the you know time of recording. This is January 2nd, 2023. So Daniel, thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you today? Thank you for having me. I'm very good. Yeah, excellent. Well, I'm excited to, to jump right into this. So, you know, this, uh, before we get into um, some of the specifics about your business, a little bit of an origin story. What is the story behind you and why did you become such a you know food enthusiast and what led you into creating Nature's Warehouse? Sure. Um, so my I'm second generation. Uh, my my mom, I, I I carry the passion that my mom um, had. She start she actually started the company, so okay. it was a lifestyle for us long before it was a business. So I was home birth, the oldest of seven, and my mom was extreme extreme back then. Uh, you know, to to pitch this, uh, position myself, so for your audience, um, you know. None of us, I, I can't say we never went to the doctor, but I think I can count maybe for seven kids, maybe three or four times that we ever went to the doctor growing wow. up. Yeah. Uh, there was, everything was treated um, holistically or through a natural doctor. Um, pain was was endured or, or, or <laughs> there was a lot of natural stuff for that, but there was no ibuprofen or, Tylenol or house, there was no, um, there, there was just no, no nothing. And, and we had, we were always on diets. It was, it was, and the diets weren't like for losing weight or something. They were, to, uh, um, you know, dealing with, with usually a, a medical, like if one of us kids had something that we're dealing with medically, the whole family went on a diet for it to, to help. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I was very extreme. I, I grew up very extreme. <laughs> I'm not as extreme as my mom was. My mom is still involved in nature's warehouse. She's retired. My brother and I run the company now. Um, cool. But, uh, but she, she still lives this way. She still, she's not quite vegan and she's not quite vegetarian, vegetarian either. Um, but in most ways she's way over on those things. Like she mainly eats nine, like 90% raw, 70% sprouted, the, wow. you know she's it, it's and in fermented 30 percent for you know she she's just very extreme my dad also uh is with her on it but but he's not as extreme like she does the cooking and she's kind of been the lead on this so. very cool i love that so family business that so gives some really great background as well very yeah like you say extreme uh especially by now nowadays standards right it's uh you know a little bit more of the norm uh, perhaps back in the day, like in, you know, our generation of growing up, yeah. uh, but it's a few and far between. I get the impression that as far as nowadays. So really cool. That's a great origin story. I like the idea of like the, uh, you know, food is medicine and that sort of yeah. thing, right? It's like you, you went on a diet to treat something as opposed to a yeah. diet to look better or, 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 you know what I mean? Or drop some weight before beach season or whatever, right. whatever else, right. fad dieting and such. Okay. So nature's warehouse, when did that actually start? So it sounds like your mom started it. How, what was it? What year was it? established and how has it sort of blossomed over the years what what sort of a development has, has occurred um so it was close to 25 years ago i think we're getting close to our 25 an year anniversary here in wow a year or so um awesome. i was not involved in the company honestly when when it started it was i have a younger brother um and with my parents and he um took the man so when we first started out we did manufacturing and retail and they started on the back porch, just selling off the back porch. No way. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. My parents had a, fam a dairy farm, selling off the back porch, made a catalog, said we can reach more people because we were living in the sticks in upstate New York, north of Syracuse. And <laughs> uh, so, you know, pots with the herbs in it, alcohol to extract. Uh, that's how it started off. Some recipes, you know, uh, pushed through some books. So my mom um, was not only a mother but she was the family doctor right yeah. and so that takes a lot of work a lot of study a lot of investment and she had connected with other ladies and men she that she would call when when she you know 
Dr. Deathridge, Dr. Christopher, uh, Mary, um, uh, Rachel Weaver. Uh, these were different people that she would call when us kids were sick, right? Right. And and, and so when she reached out to them and started, um, you know, started going this way, uh, they were there and, and helped her. She Rachel Weaver had just written a book. She helped her get it um, out there to people. And it was, it was kind of, the, that was kind of the launch of it. Now today, my brother, uh, Jonathan, he, he does manufacturing. He owns the, the Springs company and nature's warehouse. Um, we're just a retail supplement. We don't do any manufacturing. All our products mm. are, um, supplements, herbs, mainly herbs. We teach mm. that everything you need for health is growing. God put it in the ground around you. It's right. growing around you in the air and I, and, and uh, we just need to learn how to connect with it and, and properly use it. That's so cool. I love that. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, pretty cool story over the year, like from the back porch to very much uh, sort of well, niche. We're, we're our, our next, our next uh, goal is the 20 million uh, goal. So that's that is amazing. Wow. Us, yeah. And, uh, you know, shout out to your mom. Sounds like a, a, a heck of a lady, uh, you know, just was very, uh, strong will intention uh clear idea of how she wants to raise you as a as children and all that yeah very very impressive very impressive so My shout mom out to your mom does not care at all about about the sales or the, or anything all she cares about is when somebody calls her and they just found out they're pregnant and they're scared yeah. and they heard that you know that they that is all my mom cares about to this day that is her world that is her life us boys yeah. have helped make it profitable right gotcha but, but but the base of our company is you find out you have diabetes you find out you have arthritis you know we're not doctors but mom has walked for 50 years with people that are curing or treating these things and helping people overcome them it, naturally so, so so that's just like we would not call the doctor we would call mom every one of us kids seven <laughs> of us is our first response so and, cool yeah. And we want other people to do the same. Yeah. I love that. It's such a, yeah. What a unique business model. It's a, yeah, a pretty, pretty neat story for sure. I want to get into like the, you know, the herbs and the idea that everything that you need is, is part of the earth or you can plant in the earth. You can cultivate it yourself. You're talking about getting into like homesteadering and such. Yeah. Let's get into a little bit of those herbs. Like what are some of the herbs I'm looking on your website right now? And like, yeah, okay. This is familiar looking stuff. I, I don't know if I've ever purchased it but i've always been very intrigued by like you know you have echinacea gold seal root extract like where are some of the ones and and just i get get a little crash course essentially on some of these herbs please <laughs> well um so to 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 properly go down that path you have to find a, a an ailment you know certain there's something okay. you're trying to treat right so like sure, sure. So some of those ones you mentioned um would be directly connected to uh, immune system right and um natural echinacea is, is also a natural antibiotic so okay yeah the difference between herbs and taking a pill let's just say mm. you go to the doctor you feel you're feeling shitty just under the weather right so mm -hmm. so you see so you go to the doctor and the doctor says uh you know i'm gonna, give, I'm gonna put you on antibiotics for five days or seven days yeah. right so Echinacea does have some natural antibiotic properties, but it also um, gives your body the impulses to create antibiotics. Because so that's what's naturally keeping our, our system in, in, in check is, mm. is, is, is natural antibiotics. Otherwise, we'd all be sick. Like, you know, some people get sick more than others. That they're, they're out of a level on that stuff. They got, so so when, when it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, and I'm not an herbalist, right? And so, um, but, but that's, Pretty much what we teach is it's going to trigger your body to, to, to put up its natural defense and to attack the thing within itself. The great thing is there's no side effects. Right, right. right. When you take an antibiotic, it kills the infection, but it kills a lot of other stuff in your system too. Mm. And then, you know, I'm sure you've heard of yeast when somebody gets yeast infection. Yeah. Yeast infection is when the antibiotic killed too much of the good bacteria in your system and you always have yeast in your system and now you have an imbalance that the yeast is up and now you have to, to either do something to do a yeast cleanse or get healthy probiotics 
to fight that you kill by the antibiotic. <laughs> right. You see yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the difference between herbs and uh, so 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 um yeah, elderberry, echinacea, um, uh, garlic. Garlic has great properties in it. Um, boy, what else? What are um. So another one that that's an, an interesting one we sell a ton of mm. is a colostrum. It's, okay. It comes from the first eight hours of cow milk. Um, when a cow has a calf, it, it, the calf, when it's hit by a bunch of, um, well, all animals and humans, when they first come into the world, are hit by all sorts of things that they're not used to, and they can right. be very, very sick. But the, the first, I think it's two hour, up to eight hours, but I think ours is from the first two hours of the, the, it, the, the milk is so full of properties of, of antibi antibiotics, probiotics, enzymes, uh, immune enhancers, all the stuff in that milk. And, and they, and it's from uh, pasture, grass fed cows, all the, mm. all the organic, all the good stuff. And yeah. uh, they, they make that into a, a um, actually a chewable and a powder. And I think also a capsule. And uh, that's another product we sell a ton of. Right, uh, right. So those, that's just a couple. That, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm I'm looking. There's quite the extensive, uh, you know, yeah. library yeah. of things that you sell. I'm I was looking at, uh, you know, even some of these. Like you mentioned, it depends on the ailment or what's going on for the person, sure. right? Um, I'm, I, and I, and we can get on the subject of like preventative, uh, mm -hmm. maintenance as well, which is a big thing. Uh, but you know, I'm looking at, for example, uh, my fiance recently started taking magnesium and instantly made a massive difference on a few different like joint pains that she'd had. Like yeah. I'm talking instantly, I don't know how much oh, of yeah. it was placebo effect. Right. But yeah. so yeah, I'm noticing there's some magnesium in there. Uh, yeah. I haven't so, gone, I haven't gone to, to sleep. I can't really go to sleep. Um, without taking natural calm, which is just a, a magnesium with some calcium, um, you pour hot water in and it fizzes up and, oh. and it calms my chest yeah. and relaxes me. Uh, it, it, I, I can't do it. And I take a lot. This is going to get a little gross, but <laughs> you can tell if you're taking too much magnesium because your stool will get loose. Oh, okay. You right underneath there, you're yeah. taking the right amount of magnesium. Interesting. So magnesium may be another one that you'd be, what are some of the other ones that you're like, I know the garlic from what I hear though, like I've heard again, where we're talking about before we started recording the, you know, the conflicting information that you can find on online, of course, with garlic is it's not necessarily something you would take every day, right? Because it, it can have quite an effect on your body. It's like a medicinal thing that perhaps you would take, you know, like for a week or something, if you're already feeling an ailment, like, is that, is that true? Or is there something that, that well, you could take daily? We, uh, um, so there are there are some herbs that 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 could possibly um yeah so what you're what I think what you're saying is is that there, there's a fear that you um will create a dependency on the herb so, yeah, so dependency you're the herb to do the work and your, right. your system will not do it yeah but I guess yeah so yeah to, sorry to refine the question is like are these things that you're selling are they something that it's like you do as a daily right uh daily or is it like you wait till you have some symptoms and then you use it to combat yeah. these symptoms like is it more it, preventative it depends or on the product it depends yeah. there are oh, okay some, okay there are some I don't think garlic would be one that I would have ever heard that about okay I mean, once again I, I gotta throw disclaimers in here all the time because we're not doctors and I can get yeah. tons of trouble but but garlic is food and right it, and literally you can you could eat garlic every day and i don't think you'll ever you lose its potency echinacea is one that we do teach okay that you should do about a i think it's a uh 10 day cycle right where you where you maybe quit for three to five days and then hit it again um and there is another one that we use uh me melatonin products right. with melatonin for going mm -hmm. to sleep yeah highly addictive you got to be really cautious about creating it because you'll get to a point where you just can't sleep without melatonin. Um, and there's other valerian, table meal. There's other things that can help relax you and use melatonin when it's extreme. Uh, that, that's probably the path what we would suggest. Uh, yeah. Okay. Not, but here's another thing. Um, mm -hmm. Bleak bone and tissue. Is a uh, is a product that Dr. Christopher. We have a couple different versions of this. This is, but 
the cool thing about herbs is that they're not as directional as as medicines and and that type of thing. Take for example, you blow your knee out, right? Mm -hmm. um, you should probably go to the doctor and get it checked out, find out what it is. But right. let's just say you're tough like my wife and just said, hey, "I'm not going to the doctor. I'm going to treat it naturally." Um, we don't know. Did she tear cartilage? Did she? Did she? Did she um, pull a muscle? Maybe, but complete bone of tissue is going to go after the bone of the tissue, the whole thing, the whole package. Ah, I right? gotcha. Yep. It's going to give your body what it needs to, to build and feed and grow. Now, um, it, you still should go. So, so I have a girl that works for me. Um, she had, was in an accident and broke a bone in her elbow. This just mm. happened recently. Mm -hmm. And she so she woke up in the in the emergency room and uh they, they said you crushed her elbow and whatnot and she so she had like three or four days they wanted to set her she they're trying to find a surgeon to set her elbow mm. and she's like she knows herbs she's actually a family herbalist and stuff and she was telling me she would not take complete bone and tissue to after the surgery because she was worried it heals so fast it'll help the healing so much that she knows of situations talk to customers that it has helped it, the bones started growing together before they were actually set. Whoa, that's yes. unreal. Holy, that's how fast it'll work and, and start wow. setting things up and taking away the pain. Wow, it, yeah, that's yeah, that's profound. I love hearing those types of stories. Yeah, is there anything else that's, that stands out like that? Like some of these, like you know, testimonials or success stories from some of these herbs or products that you guys have. So a, a product that two products that come to mind that, that have been big sellers for us. One is um, Mama Bear Prenatal. We have an amazing, amazing uh, prenatal. In fact, we sell three to one of everything else we sell a prenatal. So if you find wow. out your wife, if you are expecting, yeah. get her out of prenatal. It's, it's it's like your baby. There's nothing more important that we teach. The, <laughs> the, 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 the thing is, is that when they're growing a little one, it sucks. It 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 the, it pulls nutrients from the mother, and unless you know that she is full of everything she needs to supply or provide for that baby, it's either going to run her down or the baby's going to be not get what it needs. And if there's any point in your life you need it, is when you're small and in the womb, right? Right. So it's so important. Um, and I can go on. For a long time about all the ingredients there's a lot of ingredients in the prenatal um it's got folic acid i'm sorry folate acid and um the other one's gonna slip me um very very those are the, the, that's what's special about our prenatal study them talk to your midwife talk to your doctor whoever you're using uh but the the, the ingredients in there took years with doctors um and uh, a midwife, and also she was a, a formulator and a scientist that, that helped. Wow. Create. And she had 12 kids of her own, and she's yeah. a grandmother now that helped okay. we create that. Yeah. Um, that's a big part of who we are. Like, it's not to us. Yes, it's good to have a degree. It's good to have whatever. But 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 we just look for the, the, the wholesome education passed down and the experience in somebody to to be alongside of somebody who understands what your body needs and is, and is able to help you understand what your body needs. You don't need all the education. You need to understand what your body's asking you for and give it to it. Ooh. Does that make sense? It totally does. I love that. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that's what you said, like before we got started, this whole idea of like, you're in control more, I'm in more control of my health than I perhaps understand right mm -hmm. instead of uh, going out and searching for like a pharmaceutical or something mm -hmm. if i do a little bit more research or you know have a conversation with you guys about uh what's going on in my life and what i'm looking for all of a sudden i can find that with something as far as like a supplement or a herb yes. herbal yep. yeah right is that yep. that's kind of the idea right yep yeah, yeah. Yep. your body's telling you what it needs it's, cry it's, cry it's crying out to you for what it needs so and how does even the recovery thing yeah that, yeah that, like like a lot of times a lot of times People go to drugs and stuff like that or to, to other things because there's something, literally something that their body needs, a, a, a nutrient 
that their body needs and they're filling with something else. Right. And so how does, how do people, how does one interpret that? Because, you know, as as further you get along and depending on how like you were fed as a child, for example, like if you're fed like hot dogs and cereal the whole time sure. and you're not really attuned to listening to what you're like, you know, that there is something, but you're not really sure what it is. What yeah. would be like a suggestion that you could give as far as uh, getting a little bit more in tune with your body? Is it a detox? Would it be like talking with folks like yourself? What would, what would be your yeah. suggestion? Yeah. Well, you know, so there's a lot of information out there. A lot of information. Lot, we we print we print a catalog a, a quarterly magazine with 44 articles in it, with with great articles. And if you're a reader, you just, you could do that. But a lot of us aren't. So that that is <laughs> that is a route, right? Right. Um. Um. So we do have a call center with 20 girls trained in it, um, oh, nice. with different levels. So you can ask your questions. I'm dealing with this. I'm feeling this. And and they're going to all the way up to we have an herbalist on staff that 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 can so that's another way. Um, you can go on our, our website, our blogs, and those type of things and, and educate yourself there. Um, but almost all of them, we're going to say you'll always hear this from us. Cut out sugar, cut out processed foods, mm. eat raw and eat fresh. Mm. Can you add some of that stuff back in? Yes. Get to know your body healthy. And you're oh. not going to get to know your body healthy until you get all that stuff out, possibly do a cleanse. Or if you just cut all that stuff out, your body will start a cleansing and start to do a cleanse on itself. You might actually have some pretty crazy effects. If you start cutting some of that stuff out. Yeah, right. Right. The sugar thing is a big thing, you know, like the, uh, there's like, I see all sorts of like, as there is with like uh stop drinking, you know, 30 day challenges. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. seen like stop sugar for seven days, even just mm -hmm. to see if you do it. And I, you know, I got about four days in, I'm like, man, this is, it's a lot more challenging than you think you're reading every label, realizing that frigging sugar is pretty much in everything. Mm -hmm. And I know that was a topic that you wanted to get into. So this is a great time as to do it is, you know, knowing what you eat, like knowing what you're putting in your body, realizing that food companies know what they, you know, they know what they're doing between like all the marketing dollars they can do and the stuff they're you know, slipping in there to make sure that we're feeling like we're dependent on it and that sort of thing. Yeah. What can you uh, tell us a little bit about what you know about that sort of the darker side of the food industry? So you'll, you'll get me going for, for five hours, but I have two, <laughs> I have yeah. two, like, yeah. it, this is so, so important. I, I, I don't know how to, 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 to show how important this part is to me because, um, the, the fact that you are what you eat is something that marketing companies know, corporates know. Corporates nowadays are so intertwined with the government. The people that are making the growth growth hormones and the BGH and the stuff that's been um, um, GMOs and all that stuff to be part of those corporations, you have to keep they have to keep somebody in Congress. Like you, they have a certain percentage of their staff that's in Congress all the time, rotating through. It's part of their system, so wow. that. They can keep their laws in because nobody would. And, and there are other countries that GMOs are not that that are more connected to to natural health and that and, and all that stuff. Th those things are not even legal there. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the the prime example is Coca Cola, right? I don't know if you've ever listened to any of the Coca Cola wars or everything, but um, Coca Cola is owned by. Um, okay, the same company that owns Coca Cola owns Bear. The, the oh. one, once a day tablet that you take for heart issues. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. So they, th there is, there have been a lot of claims and a lot of proof to the claims. And, and you know, I, I don't want to get lynched tonight. So I'm going to, but, um, <laughs> but that, that uh, Coke, they know a society that drinks a certain amount of Coke will have to use bear because they will have heart issues. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. So, so they keep that they do their pricing on the on the Coke products low enough because they cannot make Coke for the but they know that they'll get it in Bear and they own also own some other companies too. People will have heart issues and they will get the money back in the treatment of those heart issues. Wow, that's fr frightening to think, isn't it? 
yeah, and, and like this is this is a this is one of the big bigger corporations in America. Like right. the Coke and Pepsi wars, the history of that. Oh and yeah. All, all, and I, like there, there's never been anything about that that has been for health or wellness or or, or for better. And 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 literally has been it's been owned by the same companies that have been pumping us full of drugs and and literally at the end are taking us out. It, Isn't right that? That's frightening. That's frightening. And I can see where you say you don't want to watch how you say it, right? Just because if you're, you're talking about some powerful entities, right? And uh, yeah, it's it's, it's have frightening you, have stuff. Have you never heard that before or no? I hadn't heard that okay. before, no. I mean, I've watched some of these, uh, you know, the def- different uh, like Food Inc. And, mm-hmm. and things of that nature on like Netflix. And it always, you know, while I'm watching it, like I'm going vegan. And then as soon as I'm done, I'm like, man, I've been... I've been eating meat my whole, you know what I mean? So I, nutrition is definitely something I've been uh, very interested in and I just have had a hard time figuring it, navigating it more than anything. You know what I mean? As far as, okay, what, what is actually true and ultimately, and you know what, it does come back to what you said. I, myself and especially my fiance recently, I've been just listening to her bodies, her, especially like I'm 40 now and she's 35 and she's finding that if she introduces sugar or, you know, some of these like artificial food, like substances, right. If we go for dinner, she, it really affects her now. Right. So we've been trying to eat as, as clean Isn't as we can. Crazy? Oh, it is. Yeah. Right. It's and, like and 15 years ago when you were going out all oh, the time and getting burgers, we, it did not affect you. Not you at all. Cleaning out your system. Yeah. You're starting to hear hundred percent, man. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, absolutely. You know, and even for me, like, I mean, I'm a little bit luckier. I call it lucky, but it's like a little bit of a double-edged sword as I have this like really keen metabolism. Right. So I've, I've been pretty much the same weight since I was like 20. Uh, so then there's this like, you know, that addictive personality side of me that goes, Oh, you can have those, you can still eat all that junk because you're not putting on any weight. Oh, sure. So I yeah. do it. But meanwhile, like just cause I'm not putting on weight, doesn't mean I'm not ripping apart, you know, different <laughs> myself inside by eating all this crap and this sugar. Right. So, which definitely, you know, like we're coming full disclosure coming out of Christmas. I had a lot of sweets and such. Right. Sure, so, sure. yeah. But yeah, you're right though. You know, we get just getting into gut health, the idea of that we're getting into like kombuchas, like for the past three, four years, just yeah. eating a lot more vegetables, yeah. uh, you know, that kind of thing. I'd love to talk to you about actually, there's one that comes to my mind that is so much different information about uh, just like with bread with, uh, you know, the sprouted wheat and the whole wheat and the white. And there's so there's some things that I've heard online about like eat white bread because like men, you know, uh, humans aren't supposed to digest the grains and it's not good for you. And it's like these night, what is that one guy? He's all about the leaky gut, Dr. Gondry. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's a real thing. Yeah. Right. I'm okay. Sure. So interesting. So like, yeah. Is, and then, so he's all about like, if you're going to eat bread, mm-hmm. eat white bread, because it's like the whole wheat and the grains are really not meant for, for uh, humans to process. And yet growing up, it was all about whole wheat bread and multi-grain bread and all that. So that's just one of those things I'm like, well, which one is it? I keep hearing the conflicting information. I'm just more of a curiosity thing for me. What is your take on on bread? Sure. Well, I, I've never heard that. That, that I mean, I've heard, I've, I've sat in many classes on, on leaky gut and my mom is, um, but I've never heard that they eat bleached because, or bleached flour because uh, it would, it would that's a new one to me um we we teach whole you know closest closest to the source closer to so we teach whole wheat non-bleached and and if if you can get it with the with the brand still in it definitely with the brand in it and we actually sell sprouted that's okay so so not only is it a live kernel but it's it's had it's been in in an environment where it starts to sprout which like if you know familiar with kombucha and those type of things like that's the that's what they're doing there. Like mm. they, they want that ferment. It's the it's the life coming into it, oh, and, okay. and the enzymes start kicking in and all that stuff. Um, and then you grind it. That's that is what we really push is sprouted okay. flour for bread. Sprouted bread. Spr- yeah. Well, I'm glad you said that because that's the bread that we've been eating, and we'd he- uh, I'd recently heard this like conflicting yeah. uh, thing saying don't eat it. I'm like, damn it! Like I've that's I've thought crazy, I was yeah. eating this great stuff this whole time, right? And <laughs> it's always agreed with me though. So I mean, yeah. like you say, at the end of the day, it's kind of again, it's yeah. getting more in tune with my own body and yeah. and so forth. And I'll tell you though, yeah, exactly. Well, oh, go ahead, yeah. I, yeah, getting in tune with your own body, but also. And I don't want to go off on a tangent because I can on this one, but <laughs> knowing the source of your food, 
Okay? Yes. Yeah, let's get and, into this. Yeah. And, 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 and like the closest to the source is probably the healthiest. Okay. Right. Okay. If, if it's, and, and that's why that whole thing about being bleached kind of blows my mind because if you can go out to the field and just strip that weed off in, in, in that fresh wheat and grind it and uh, eat it like that, that flour is going to be the healthiest for you. Now, we know nowadays that, that they're, they're, they're messing with the seeds their mess, they're spraying the fields. GMOs are, are, are crazy. I'm going to do a real quick crash course on GMOs. Mm, please do. GMOs. They had genetically engineered, genetically modified seeds is what it is. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're just they're doing, um, they're editing the seed. Why? So they... We're growing corn, right? Growing corn is, is tough work because of the weeds. You gotta you gotta get those weeds out of there. And then somebody came up with the idea of this, and we'll get a spray with the high poison, we'll spray the fields and kill all the weeds, and then we'll plant the corn. It'll give us that give the corn a head start, right? Right. And uh so everybody was like, Oh, that's awful. There's no way that that poison's out of the soil before the <laughs> corn sprouts, right? Right. They said, Oh, it's fine. And then they said, you know, it would be better if we can spray the corn and the, and, and so, you know, that are you, am I, am I going down a path? You already know everything on this or no? Well, let's, let's get into it because there's, there might be some folks that like, I've, I, okay. it's, I'm sure it's okay. been on so one then, of these. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so you're like, uh, it would be great if we just spray the corn and it wouldn't kill the corn, but it killed the weeds. So what they, that's when GMO started. They, mm. they, they edited those, those seeds so that they the corn grows and it has a tolerance to poison to the poison yes. that they're round up is the name of the and you've heard it seen it in court cases it's a it's yeah. a round up was what it was before they they changed up the edge of it to whatnot it's got new names that's why it's, but roundup was the company originally that, that that worked with the gmo engineering right. and and so so nowadays 85 percent of our corn is genetic is coming in america not another. Mm. That, that's not national. That's not worldwide. That's, that's right. you know, America because there's other countries that don't allow it at all. Eighty-five percent of our corn is genetically engineered, so they can spray poisons on it. So not only is it edited, but it's got poison sprayed right on it while it's growing, and it's right. so strong that it kills everything else. Like that, after they spray, everything else dies in the field, and the corn keeps growing. Wow. The negative is they can't plant those seeds anymore because they're the life is edited out of them. Man. So we could go down the path of tumors and cancers and all the stuff. And when that came in and tied in with, with this, and, and, and that's a whole study in itself. And I can right. make a lot of claims, but I'll tell you, there's some very strong claims, some very questionable. So I like to eat organic as much as possible. You, organic means non-GMO and not sprayed. Yeah. And okay. a few other things, but that, yes. it means that. If you can't always get organic and we can't afford it, if you can get non-GMO, then that that knocks out a lot of the heavy stuff. Okay? Right. Okay. So 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 that's the steps. If you can't afford organic, organic's better. Yeah. yeah. But here's here's the next thing I want to say. Um, organic, organic is is good, right? But a product is only as good as the chain of command in touching right. that product. Right. right. Yep. So. Yep. So we're getting at all these nowadays certified organic garlic for what? Anywhere from 59 cents a pound to $1.59, depending on what's going on in the world and all that type of thing. A local farmer cannot grow even non-certified, just, just organic garlic. Who you, you looks you in the eyes and shakes your hand and says, this is organic. I've never sprayed it. I haven't mm. ever sprayed it in my fields. I haven't. He can't grow it for under $5 a pound. So what's the chance that that garlic at Aldi's, which by the way, does come from China, look at the box. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's where I start going to, I would rather buy, and, and I'm teaching people and working with people to grow it yourself. Don't use the sprays, teach people how not to skip the sprays and all this stuff. And I sell produce and stuff like that to local in my local warehouses and stuff like that, but I don't make enough money. And it's, 
I sell the supplements. That's what I would rather just educate people. Grow it yourself. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Number two, connect with a local farmer, shake his hand, look him in the eye and tell him what's important to you. Most mm. important to me is that I don't have GMOs, non-GMO seeds. Oh, I don't mm. use GMO seeds. Where do you get your seeds? Ask him that. Right. You can find okay. out if that, if that seed company actually does even have, there's not that many seed companies that carry non-GMO seeds. Really? Find out if that company does. Wow. Pay attention. If you can't, you know, a lot of us live in cities. I live in the city. I don't, I have a small tomatoes and what, but I can't grow my food like right. I would like. I right. can't definitely can't grow a beef, you know, yeah. but I have met farmers and I can tell this guy's had, well, I, I had guys tell me I won't go organic because they have laws that don't mean, don't validate anything and mine healthier and better. And I said, why? And we had that conversation. See yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then number three, there are some things that you can't, um, you can't possibly grow yourself or get from a local producer that that you can shake hands with, such as citrus if you live in the North Countries or right. grapes and that type of thing. The, mm -hmm. Those type of things, you know, there are companies like Nature's Warehouse. Um, we don't care. We don't ship, so our, our produce is not available everywhere. But there's other small farmers markets and stuff go in find out take the time the thing is is that people think that that by talking to the store owner and saying is this is it organic and is it you know all this stuff you're irritating yeah. them and you may be but you're also showing him what you value right and, and if he's a business owner he's he wants to know what's valued by his customers so he can bring it to them yeah yeah good point good point you see what i'm saying and absolutely yeah that's great and you know it's some really good easy to remember feedback for everybody that's listening right being in tune listening to your body and and you gave the steps to do that take away the sugar take away the artificial ingredients and such and then start listening okay what is your body craving do some experiments and then from there okay what kind of food are you going to be looking at okay look to know at least the origin of where you're getting it whether it's a farmer or if you're buying local going to farmers markets and then knowing if you're keeping the GMOs and, uh, you know, if you can afford the organic, right? So really basic, easy action steps for everybody that's yes, listening, which is really great, is. right? Yeah. So, you know, keep it simple, right? And, you know, yeah. this, even just you saying this and talking to you about this really cuts through a lot of that bullshit that we were talking about before with the different you know, uh, articles that are conflicting and saying, well, you got to do this and there's only one good way to do it. And then you're factoring in the fact that, you know, it's like there, I don't, for me, it's like, there's no broad strokes for people per se, because everybody's at a different spot in their life. Some yeah. people have different intolerances yeah, and such. Right. Yeah. And right. So yeah. Interesting stuff though. I really like how just simple the information is that you give and how easy it is to follow it. So, and that, which I do appreciate you know, and when you got into like the whole idea of growing your own food and then even giving the alternatives, if you can't, you're in a city. OK, we'll go reach out to a farmer that is just on the outskirts of town, ask him some questions. Then, you know, where your food is coming from, which is, you know, it's all it would take is is, you know, a, a, a group of people to start doing that. And then that is in a way is showing the big food markets, you know, there's a whole movement of that going on. Is that right? interesting? Tell me about yeah. it. Yeah. I'd love yeah. to hear Not this. Just to, like I see other businesses. There's all of a sudden I see them popping up around. Uh, it's becoming a thing in, in the bigger cities. I know of farmers that are taking their products into Chicago, up into Cleveland, wow. down into Columbus. Very cool. Um, there's, there's, there's popping up around um, uh, South Carolina, so Charlotte, some of those, uh, yeah. you know, you might healthy, food does take work. So it's not, yes. it's not as quick as driving through, running through McDonald's. Like it's going to take <laughs> more work. Another yeah. thing is if you're buying direct from pro, um, uh, producers, you probably are going to have to figure out some ways to preserve, to freeze that because, because they're seasonal. There's a yeah. lot, there's a lot to that. And, and, you know, like I said, I am, I am uh, working towards writing a book on some of this stuff to yes. help people with the yeah. steps of this. And this is where the stuff I want to get into. Uh, but yeah. That's great. And you know what? We already talked about it beforehand too. You mentioned the book. So we'll have you back on um, because what, basically what the content of the book is, is as far as like taking, you know, your sovereignty is essentially back or like your power yeah. back as far as like, 100%. right. And which is taking control of your, what you're putting yeah. into your body and how, and how you're going about it. Right. So One which thing, is, can I just say something real quick? Please do. Yeah. We just came through a, uh, 
world-changing event. I don't know if you heard about it. A <laughs> little bit, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so and, and we were told um, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. <laughs> do this, do this, do yeah. this, right? Yeah. Not a yes. lot of listen to your body, not a lot of is, 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 is your immune system, how are you, are you ready? You know, a lot. Of, and, and that's where I sudden, and this is stuff we've always believed and taught, but I, I opened my eyes to how many people don't take responsibility for it. 100%. They just do what they're told. Yes. Right? Yeah. And I'm not here making saying, don't do any of those things you were told out there. Sure. Sure. I'm saying you're responsible, not the government, not some doctor that the government appointed, not anybody else. You're responsible for your body and your children's body. Yeah. No one else. Yeah. 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 Right. No, again, well put. I like how you, you have a way of just like cutting through the BS and like, okay, it comes down to this, you know, it's your body, it's yeah. your life. So what, what are you, what are you, it's all taking responsibility essentially. Yeah. Right. A lot of that. So I'm getting that. I'm hearing that. So that's really cool. Uh, you do. I've been very much enjoyed uh, their conversation and I'm Thank definitely you. looking forward to having the secondary one when your book comes out. Congratulations on that. The progress you've made with that. Congratulations to you guys coming up on your 25th anniversary. It's an amazing story. Nature's Warehouse and Daniel, uh, thank you for coming on today. If there's, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on? There was a lot of great information we got. So no, just, uh, you know, if you go on Nature's Warehouse, you can go down, you can read our blog on the bottom. You can sign up for our email. I do write weekly emails. Um, I don't do a lot of education in them. They're more like this, me pointing to different sources of education. Cool. And, and um, we do have the call center. The 800 number is on, on the website. Uh, okay. You can chat on the, you can text us. And if you want more information or to talk to me, call, talk to the girls or an herbalist. Mm. Um, talk to the girls, mm -hmm. they'll set up appointments and it's all free. Every, all the education through us is free. So it's amazing. We, we, it's, it's, we support and we're supported by um, the, the product sales. So yeah. That's, yeah. that's great, dude. And like, yeah, that's so important. Um, you know, I, I, I can see myself using that uh, 1-800 number and reaching out to you about uh, certain things uh, in the future here as well. So thanks for leave, uh, leaving that in. And as you know, working with the addiction uh, and recovery community, uh, people that are getting back into exactly what we talked about, getting out of that numbing feeling and getting back into their bodies and such, I could see that it'd be very beneficial for people to to know that as well. So thank you for providing that. You're welcome. Thank you. Awesome. And yeah, we'll have you back on the show again, Daniel. Any final words or uh, just so your, where, your website and everything, I'll have you obviously in the show notes. Uh, yeah, any final words for uh, for the no, new year here? I just want everybody yep. to, to, to understand they, they've got it. They can take control. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.